Hey, and welcome to MRED. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to do a home bedding job on a, well, it'll work on just about any rifle, but in particular, I'm going to show you how to do it on a Howard type action, which is, this is a RWS type, I think it's an 89, RWS type 89. Um, but that's, uh, the Howard is a, practically the same action, so is the, uh, the Weatherby. Um, Remington will be pretty pretty much the same, except the bottom won't be as flat. So the first thing I did is I've taped off the sides for the overflow or an overspill, and I've taped the barrel in the barrel channel so that it's sitting dead center. It's not lopsided. Uh, that was one of the main problems with this one when it, before it was bedded. Is uh, this is a brand new Boyd's featherweight thumb hole uh, laminate stock? It looks really nice, but the problem with it is that uh, the barrel was sloppy inside the action just even though it fit into the, the the recess wasn't perfect in there so we're going to bed it i've done it before to um, other boyd stocks that i own uh, this one's going to be uh, just a nice easy job so the first thing i've done as i said was the taper on the barrel you start on one side and when you do half rotation that's one and then two three keep going until the barrel is centered in the channel but not being held up out of it and not sunk down into it uh, so it's it's holding level when you're holding down the back of the action it's sitting right in the middle of the thing right in the middle of the the channel so what we're going to do i'm going to show you here i'm going to lift it out and straight away you can see these big stilts these are just uh two bolts with the same um thread as the uh takedown bolts um screwed up and built up with the uh, tape and what this will do, this will help locate the action when you're putting it in, and it will stop any of the bedding compound getting up into the action. Uh, because this is a Howa action, uh, you can see it doesn't have the, it's a bit different, it's flat bottom compared to the Remington straight away. This is your only real hole here, and that's your one screw for taking off the trigger assembly. This is your um, bolt release. Uh, the whole thing is coated in a release agent. Um, you can use just about any release agent. I use... Um, uncolored shoe polish uh, it does the job really good give it a quick rub down not so it's gloopy just so it's given a nice coat uh, that it won't affect the finish at the end of it um, any shoe polish will work it doesn't have to be a particularly big brand or anything so this is all prepared you can see inside in the action here well, you might be able to see inside the action and I have holes drilled I'll bring it closer you can see the holes I have for the compound to sit into. And you can see in the bedding, or the, there you go, and see more in there. And you can see little um, recesses cut at the back of the recoil lug receiver where you don't want the, the bedding compound to come up against a hard corner because it'll there'll be very little bedding compound in that area. So you just want to give it a little bit more room where it can come around the corner without being cut off. And this here is this little channel protector to stop the bedding compound rolling up into the rest of the uh, barrel channel. And a little holes bedded, little holes bedded just behind it as well. So this is as far up as it's going to go. So it's going to fill all this area here. It's going to come back. It doesn't matter if it's going in here. This is just tissue to stop them falling on the table. It's going to come back. It's going to stop out here. Same on the other side. Uh, it's going to go from here all the way up to here again and we're going to bed the back tang as well nothing's going to go in here where the bolt goes in or the the safety and the, the trigger recess so that's the main part of that that's all been degreased because we want that to be able to uh, hold as well as we can i'm going to be starting with the recoil look so I'll focus this here okay so everything is coated in, re in release agent except for the action which has been degreased when you're using a degreaser, you don't want to use something that's going to uh, strip. It depends on your chassis. If you have a, a chassis that's um, adenized or something like that, you don't want something that's going to be able to strip that. In this case, we have a, a chassis which is glued laminate timber. We don't want a um, we don't want a degreaser that's going to be able to eat through glue. So we use or I use Hoppy's Blast and Shine. It does the job perfectly. It just gets rid of any grease, any fingerprints in there so we can get a good bond. Uh, it does remove paint, though. 
almost instantly. So make sure you don't get any on any painted surfaces you want to keep painted. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to mix up our bedding compound. And what we're going to be using is a JB weld. You can get it just about anywhere. See the tubes there. Um, this stuff takes a long time to dry. Um, somewhere up in the region of 10 hours. Not a big deal, but uh, you want to make sure you wait at least 10 hours before you start testing out your, your new groups. So let's move this so we can see the mixing process. You can do this without knocking over the camera in my, uh, my ghetto bipod. Here we go. Now, so we're going to... This is the epoxy steel resin. And you have to mix it one for one. So we're going to go at one line, two lines. Now, because this stuff takes so long to dry, we don't have to use a ton of it straight off. But I'm going to use three lines of each tube. And the beauty about this stuff is one of the compounds is black and one of the compounds is gray. When you mix them up, oh, it's white, sorry. Uh, the compound is white. And when you mix them up, you get a gray compound and you know it's mixed properly when it is gray. They won't go off separately. They have to be mixed. So, there we go. Two, three. Okay, that's about the same amount of each. That was the, the hardener. So we're going to mix the two of these up and then we're going to flood our recoil lug back our two channels and um, do our rear uh, tang as well. So this is going to start getting messy now. So we're just going to leave some uh, paper underneath our chassis. And we're going to switch the camera back over here so we can see what I'm doing. Hopefully. Bring it over here a bit more. This is well coated in release agent. Nothing's going to stick to this. Uh, we'll just do one more test fit. So it'll drop straight into the holes and line up perfectly. It's going to sit with the barrel down on the action. It won't. If I go down any farther than that, it starts lifting up the back, uh, the back of the action. You don't want that. So it's sitting perfectly the way it is right there. Um, so we're going to pop it back out again. When we are taking it out, we're going to use a, a vice grips to remove these two bottom poles. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just mix up our bedding compound. So at the moment you can see it's two colors. We're going to uh, mix it up. It'll turn gray. Once it's gray, all mixed up, you want to get it as good to 100% of mix as you can. What we're going to do, we're going to do the important parts first, uh, like where the two action bolts come in. Because we want that to sit right down into the little recesses that we drilled earlier on, so that we get a good mechanical lock. We don't want to just be sitting on a flat surface because it will break off, it can chip off. Heavier calibers will easily knock it out eventually. This is a 243, or a Winchester 243. Uh, so it's not a heavy kick, but it's not by any means a light kick either. It's got a little bit of a sting to it. Okay, so what we're going to do is going to plug up, I'll use a bit of tissue. We're going to plug up the bottom just so it doesn't roll all over the table. Then we're going to push through this little plug later on. I'm just going to get a little plug of paper, stick it right down into the hole. And when we put down the action, it'll push this through and out the bottom just the way we need it. It's going to do the same on the uh, on the rear one. There we go. 
Perfect. All right. It's kind of hard to get a good view here, but we'll do what we can. All right, we're going to start putting this into the recoil lug. The old the small camera here, I don't really see. I don't think you're going to see too much in the big one. So we want to work it in into those holes that we put for it. I'm going to have to mix more of this, but that's not a problem because this takes so long to go off. Now you don't have to tape up the sides of your gun, but it does make it a bit easier. Okay. Now on these guns, the recoil lug is, has a 45 degree angle on the forward facing end. So it's going to push a good bit of it back out, which is not a big deal. It just means we don't have to fill it to the very top. And we're going to just do here as well. The problem is if you use a compound that dries too quick, you're going to get into trouble because this can doing this properly can take a while. You want to make sure you're getting into all these little holes to get the best possible lock. When you're feeling a screwdriver, probably isn't the greatest uh, thing. If I had a lollipop stick, it'd probably work a lot better. Our action is completely waxed up. So our two locating rods, which are in the takedown screw holes. When you push this in, it's gonna push out the tissue on the bottom. We're gonna get a little bit of drippage, but we should be fine. There's lots of, there's lots of um, release agent on this. I don't think we're gonna have any issues. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna put it in. I'll push it down. I'll find the hole. There we go. That's down. That's good. That's sitting in and it's pushing out at the two sides. Um, That's looking nice. Good. Okay, it looks pretty ugly right now, but it's going to get a lot better very soon. Now, this is what I mean by the no stress method. We're not going to put in action screws. We're not going to tighten it down. What we're going to do is tape it in place. And we do this because if we put a lot of force on this action now that it's sitting in the gun. When it gets hard and we take it out, because it's a wooden stock, it looks, it's going to spring back a certain amount. So what we're going to do is we're just going to tape it down with not a lot of force, but enough force. There you can see, it's all the way there now. Enough force that it's holding itself in its final position. Whoop like my camera. 
So we're just going to tie them up here. We're just going to clean up the spillage and we have to wait. Okay, looking good. Some of the best stuff for cleaning the solution off is a good bit of WD-40 and some uh, Q-tips. I'm just going to spray a bit here on the table. I'm going to use the Q-tips to wipe up the seeping metal. And you will get you will get metal seeping out, or compound seeping out. If you haven't any seeping out, you probably don't have enough in there. And it'll seep for a little while. It won't just all of a sudden stop because it has to sink down a certain amount. That's all looking really good. It's all lined up really nice. At the end of the day, this is going to make the stock more rigid and more reliable as in every shot will be easier to reproduce and that's the whole thing about precision shooting is doing the same thing properly every single time if you can do the same thing every time but your gun is doing something different every time you're going to have a problem this at least will take the gun out of the equation if there's any big problems probably to do with the shooter so this would be left i'm actually going to move it to another room and leave it overnight but uh, everything looks great, so I'm very happy with it. I'm actually looking into the action here. Got a good seepage all the way back. So it's good contact all the way back to just before the trigger. Right, so check back with me when I crack it out of the stock tomorrow. Hopefully it'll come out of the stock. I'm pretty sure it will. And uh, we'll see how, uh, how nice and straight it is. And welcome back. Uh, it's been overnight. It's been sitting uh, something like nine, 10 hours now. <clears throat> and um, I've taken the action out and I've taken off the, the little locating dowels I put in. So first thing I'm going to do is just show you uh, what it looks like inside. So we're just going to lift it up, which is nice and easy. And I'm going to show you with this camera here. You can see, it's kind of hard to get some light into it. You can see where the bedding compound has filled in all the gap and all along the side. Back here at the rear tang is also all bedded in. Now, um, I have one side finished. I didn't finish the other side, so I could do it. You can see what it looks like when it comes out. It's pretty rough. I'm just going to focus this a bit better. There, now. So this is the unfinished. When it comes right out of the mold, it looks like this. It's all glumpy and stuff. And you see the, the rear tang is bedded there. And you can see right down where it's all filled up. Now, what I was really surprised with is how little contact. You might be able to see here that this surface here, you can just about see the wood grain through it. That's how light the coating is here. So this is the main... Uh, surface which when it's screwed in it takes most of the pressure uh, but now of course because we bedded it it's being shared through all the recoil lug back here and back along the two sides uh, is now sharing all the load um, and back here at the the rear takedown screw so there's gonna be a lot more surface area especially with this flat um, RWS action uh, in some ways it's easier to bed than a Remington because the Remington has the round surface which you have to do more, put more compound in to get this amount of bedding surface done. Um, but uh, yeah, it came out pretty good. Uh, I didn't bother filling up the sides. Um, you can see back where it rolled. This is the line of where the action goes back to here. There's a little gap and back here. This is all surface con or contact between the action and the stock. but the real proof is when we put drop the uh, barreled action in, we'll be able to see uh, how straight it is. And hopefully, if I line this up here, you might be able to see how straight it is. Barreled action, which is cleaned off, just going to leave it down into it, and it just drops down. 
everything is dead straight. The gap with the barrel is perfect. It's the exact same each side. It's free floated all the way back to just here, maybe four millimeters from the front of the action at the barrel. It's completely free floated there. Um, and once it's down solid, uh, it's just locked in really nice. Uh, there's no more movement, no forwards, no backwards, no side to side. Because we had the, the dowels in there, when we dropped the action in to the stock, it wasn't canted to either side. It's perfectly straight. It couldn't be any more straight. Um, nothing is bound up. There's no calico metal stuck to the action. You see the back here, you can just about see the bedding compound behind it when it's down. It's nice and clean along the sides. There's no spillage, no marks. Same thing on this side when it's down. No spillage or marks all the way up. And very importantly, we're now sitting in the very, very center of our barrel channel. And when I, I don't have any action screws in now, but when I move it, it'll always go back to where it came from, which it didn't do before. It would come back a little, it wouldn't come back at all, and it doesn't move in any direction. So that's really well bedded in uh, action. So what I'm gonna show you here is how I use the Dremel to sand away the excess inside in the uh, magazine well, just to tidy it up a bit. So use a little sanding drum from a Dremel. You see it there. It's on low speed. So you don't want to get into uh, the last thing you want to do is start moving the uh, wood. There you go, and you can see we took away all the the over over spill from the chemical metal or the JB weld. I'm just gonna blow off this. Okay, just gonna give it a quick wipe down, and you can see the uh, the finished product. Okay, and here you can see the finished bedding job all the way through. Get some light in here. From the recoil lug all the way back. And there's no overspill, it's nice and tidy. You can see everything. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to just drop in our action barrel and floor plate. We're not going to put in the trigger yet, but um, we'll do that in a minute. I just want to do a quick test fit. Our magazine, box magazine moves inside, so everything is still lined up perfectly. There we go. Turning perfectly back to zero. That's what we want. Yeah. So that's it. That's how I bed my rifles. Um, the quick rundown is give it a good surface on the stock for the the compound to stick to. Uh, grease down your action and barrel so nothing sticks to that. Fill in all the little holes, screw holes around the trigger, or pin holes or whatever depending on the action. Uh, fill up the holes in the stock so nothing's going to drip onto your table. If you can make uh, locating rods just like those that I showed you, if you can't you can still do the job, it's a little bit harder, especially with the Remington action because the whole action is round. It's, it's a little bit more tricky to get it sitting perfectly straight in the stock. Um, and when you push the screws up from the bottom to stop the, stop the bedding going inside in it, it's, there's a pretty good chance you're going to push some bedding compound into the action, which will end up on a Remington uh, 
just behind where the barrel comes in and threads in so in between um, your ejecting port and here there might be some in, a compound in there so you got to check that um, that's more or less it put it in I don't clamp stuff down I've seen people with screwdriver or with a G clamps once they have their bedding compound in there clamping down on the whole thing so it's squeezing as tight as they can but I don't like doing that because if you're going to squeeze that hard on the stock um, once you let it dry and you let off those clamps it's going to spring back a certain amount and it's not going to sit perfectly and you want it to be able to do the same thing every time you pull the trigger you don't want it to be different so you don't want it to be as consistent as possible and if you don't put stress on it it's easier to get consistency out of it than if you're clenching down on something or you have something completely tight and then when you put it back on next time you have to get it the exact same pressure um well this is uh how i bet it you can follow how i do it if you don't feel like you can do it there's a a good lot of gunsmiths around which will do this work um i know there's a, a guy uh if you go to his website it's sro.ie uh john green he will um he can do it for you uh i'm not sure about prices he's a he's very um competitive in his prices he does immaculate work he'd obviously be able to do it a million times better than me but um for uh for the home remedy that will get him way out to uh, probably 700 no problem without any problems with this stock but if you get a boy stock you really gotta bet it and you should either get it done yourself or buy a professional but um yeah thanks for watching please uh like and subscribe if you have any questions put them down below the video i'll try to answer them straight away bye now